today and tomorrow are two days that we celebrate Holi, which is the festival of colors known everywhere else in the world. Holi, of course, uh, represents um, no boundaries, no color boundaries. That's why when everybody throws color at each other, we all look the same. And to talk more about Holi, um, we have a guest and I will be introducing him in a minute. I want to say a little bit about our company, uh, which is IT Productions Limited, which owns Spice Radio. And about three years ago, um, I said to our general sales manager, I said, you know, um, Holi is coming up and we are doing nothing about it. So he came up with this lovely idea of raise your hands against racism. The city of Vancouver is a great partner of ours. The city of White Rock wanted to be a partner and are our partner. The city of Burnaby is a partner of ours. The city of Surrey is a partner of ours. And um, this year, many school districts have become our partner. We are also very pleased that a uh, commercial uh, company uh, by the name of Fresh Slice uh, is our partner. Um, CBC has always been with us, and uh, we'll talk about CBC in a little while. But let's start today's program and to talk about what Holi really means. I have a distinguished guest with me here. His name is Sundar Rajan. He's a passionate public speaker. I've known Sundar for, oh, good eight, ten years. Um, he dedicates his spare time coaching children in public speaking and leadership skills. He also spends a considerable amount of time studying about ancient India. So if you want to know anything about Indian history, especially ancient, ancient Indian history, Sundar Rajan is the right person. We used to do a program called uh, Aradhana. And Sundar was our main guest in that program to talk about Indian mythology and Indian history. And he conducts classes on applying ancient Eastern wisdom into daily lives. He also speaks on yoga and meditation, especially with a focus on children. Other than that, Sundar Rajan writes and directs stage dramas. I didn't know that side of you, Sundar, but that's amazing for his community from time to time. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Sundar Rajan to the program today. Sundar, before you start speaking, it's customary for me to color your face. You, you have to hold the microphone. Thank you, Ji. Good afternoon. Namaste. Sastriyakal. It's been a wonderful day today, especially with the wonderful weather outside. And as I was driving here, I was hoping to see a lot of smiling faces, eager to celebrate the Festival of Color, also called Holi. So I was looking at raise your hand against racism. How do you raise your hand against racism? Can you all show me? Good. Raise your hand. Can I get a volunteer? Come. Come up. OK. I'll show you the right way to raise your hands against racism. OK. Raise your hand. Raise your hand against racism. One. Both hands. OK. Now turn to me. That's how you. That's how you raise it. It's not to stop it, but to embrace. Right? So Holi is a festival of color. Now, it was very uniquely designed to bring people together. It, was, it is the Spring Festival of India, also called the Vasantotsa, which is festival of spring. And spring brings along what? New life, creativity, happiness. And that's the same here, March Madness, right? So what happens in spring is people come out of their shelter onto the road. There is no rich or poor, no young or old, and there is no region or religion. It is just human versus human. They, they take colors, sprinkle on each other, and when there's full, I mean, people are painted with colors, what happens? Differences are forgotten. Now, you're not a different color from me. You're just another person who is enjoying this, this holy along with me. 
right? It's, it's painting the town red, literally speaking. And I would love for Canada, especially if, if, uh, as policymakers, to have something that can bring all people together. I know we have one great thing that brings people together. But most of the festivals we have are either religious or cultural. Hockey sir, is the only thing that actually brings us all together. You know, everybody goes, you know, there's no religion, race, or anything, but it's, it's just hockey. So similar, I want us all to get together as human beings. And today, what we're trying to do is propagate this, this March madness, the spring, take this infectious celebration of Holi and pass it on to the people you meet. And the next time you meet somebody, teach them how to stop racism. And how do you do that? Raising your hand, standing it, embracing it. That's how we do it. Yeah. And thank you for providing this opportunity. And thank you for coming. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and meet our um, MC of the day, Anita Bad. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm so pleased to be a part of this event. You know, I have to admit, I didn't know a lot about it before um, I was asked to do this. And so I started looking into it and I just thought, wow, this is pretty incredible. And even just hearing, learning more about Holy, I myself didn't know all, all of the things that we just learned. And I think uh, it just is truly incredible and really speaks to um, what we should all be striving for. So as a reporter and host at the CBC, I have certainly covered a lot of news stories um, and a lot of them centered around fear. You know, 2016 was a year that forced a lot of conversations out into the open. Talking about other cultures, other races became a bit more of the norm. And it's no secret, you know, you look at the American election and that was really a platform for a lot of that. Uh, but even before that, we saw people having those conversations when we talked about the influx of Syrian refugees coming into Canada and other parts of the world, also the Brexit vote that faced people in the UK, along with police-involved shootings in the US, all of these things in 2016 really created a platform for a lot of those conversations. And the unfortunate thing is, is that a lot of these, these events actually embodied a major theme of xenophobia. And again, these events forced conversations that many people thought society had gone far beyond. You know, I looked at some of these conversations and I thought, I can't believe that we're having these in 2016. So this is what makes it more important now than ever to change this, to bring a pattern for a healthier dialogue. And as Canadians, it's vital to renew our commitment to tolerance and respect for diversity. So I really want to thank you all for being here today, just being here you know, symbolizes that you want to be a part of that change and that uh, new pattern that we want to create for a better world. Um, so we were going to start off with Kat Norris uh, giving us a little bit of a welcome, but she hasn't arrived yet, so we're going to skip right to the award. So for the past, past few years, Spice Radio has been recognizing the community's unsung heroes, honoring their commitment to tolerance, respect for diversity, and effort in making the world a better place with the third annual Hands Against Racism Award. So it's my honor to present to you this year's recipient, author and professor, Dr. Sanera Thibani. Dr. Thibani is an associate professor in the Department of Asian Studies and the Institute for Gender, Race, Sexuality, and Social Justice at UBC. Her work focuses on critical race, post-colonial and feminist theory, but also globalization, media, citizenship and migration, Muslim women, and the war on terror. You could see that she really has a broad knowledge about a lot of things. Uh, joining me on stage though, I want to welcome Baltage Dillon. He is last year's recipient and he's going to be presenting this award. Please welcome Dr. Thibani.
So um, I'll just say a few words. Thank you very much for this honor. I really am very, very honored by receiving this award. Um, I want to also acknowledge that we are on indigenous lands and that any struggle against racism has to begin with addressing the racism that's directed against indigenous peoples and recognizing that all of us here are living on stolen lands and that indigenous people are still struggling for their sovereignty. So any anti-racist politics has to begin with solidarity with indigenous peoples. I'd also like to uh, just point out that racism, fighting racism is the biggest struggle of our times. And as we're seeing across the Western world, in Canada too, that this new, newly sanctioned uh, racism that is fueling the extreme right movements uh, is profoundly changing our society and it will change it for the foreseeable future. So the fight against racism is the most important fight of our times. It's also important to recognize that racism isn't expressed in the same way against different communities. Yes, it affects all of our lives, but the ways in which it is expressed against Aboriginal people is very different from the anti-black racism that we see in Canada and other places as well. It's expressed in very different ways against the Asian communities, against the Latin American communities. And the only way that we can recognize these different expressions of racism is to come together, to build coalitions, to learn from each other, not to conflate the differences that exist between us or the power hierarchies between us, but to learn from each other's experiences, find a place that brings us together and build coalitions around that. And I think that's the only way that we can really defeat racism in our societies. So thank you again very much for giving me this tremendous honor. And it's wonderful to see all of you here. Uh, I'll see you again next year. And in the meantime, keep fighting racism whenever and wherever you see it. Our life depends on it, literally. Thank you. Very well said. Thank you so much and congratulations. And you know, just speaking to that, bringing the world together and, and having all of these different cultures be able to come into this melting pot that we often talk about is something that we are actually going to see with one of our next performances. Are, do we have the drummers ready to go? I see them outside there. So these guys are incredible. Uh, brought to you together by Sal Ferreras, this ensemble along with numerous guest artists has been performing together at festivals and corporate events since 2008. Now, during the Olympics here in Vancouver, they actually got the chance to perform uh, in the team welcome ceremonies for each nation that arrived at the Olympic Village. The artists you're about to see on stage, they represent sounds from India, Africa, Brazil, Cuba. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a very warm welcome to Sticks and Skins.
incredible. Thank you so much. Who would have thought that all these different types of drums and all these different types of people could come together and create such beautiful music? All right, so we do have another very special speaker for you. And I have to admit, when I first read about this, and I was a little bit shocked and surprised when I started reading about it, and I'm sure maybe you will be as well, um, but it's pretty incredible, I think, what we're about to hear. So Tony McClare um, is actually a former organizer for the White Aryan Resistance. Now, Tony actually served as a skinhead recruiter and a manager of a rock band known for its resistance against people of color, Odin's Law. But Tony's love for children actually led him on a spiritual journey of personal transformation. You know, financial hardship and harsh realities of single parenthood. Being a single parent, that brought him into a place of compassion and forgiveness. Now, Tony has spent the last six years as principal of McLaren Associates Wealth Management. But this is the really cool part. He also travels as a motivational speaker, and today he's the executive director of Life After Hate. So I want to welcome Tony to share his story. He's going to be sharing his group's kindness, not weakness curriculum. Welcome, Tony. That's no, okay. I've, um, thank you very much for, for having me. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. And, um, I really enjoy the times that I come on with uh, Gurpreet as a, as a guest on, on Spice Radio. I don't need the podium. Um, and we're today facing this crisis where there seems to be hatred and division everywhere. And it's, it's on both sides. The, the level of dehumanization that I see going on um, is actually quite su uh, surprising. And, and, um, I'm inspired very much by Martin Luther King, and to paraphrase uh, Dr. King, uh, and he was one of the reasons that we started Life After Hate. Now, Life After Hate is an organization dedicated to helping people leave the extreme far right, and we're all, the five of us that founded it, we're all former members. That's how we're able to help these, these people get out, and we're involved in a lot of research. We travel the world informing government, policy, law enforcement, um, and we do outreach, and Along that way, I've, I've learned the human experience of, through my own, unraveling my own story um, and listening to the stories of others, how people get drawn in to these groups because people aren't born into them. Yeah, this didn't all happen overnight. This was part of a process, and, and it, but it was the beginning of the thawing process and the reconnection to my heart because here's what I'll tell you about children. They're safe to love. They can't harm you. They have nothing but love and compassion. They don't see the lies we believe about ourselves that we're not good enough, we're not smart enough, we're not pretty enough, we're not whatever. And, you know, there's three places in my life, and it, all the stories that I've heard from hundreds of formers that I've talked to, their stories of transformation all have one component that shows up over and over and over and over again, and it's compassion. But the compassion from children. And it, it seems to me the birth of a female child anecdotally um, is the predominant story. And I think there's something about that feminine energy coming into that hyper-masculine world that is, you know, that, that violent extremist. So the compassion piece is, I think, is, is something that I want to highlight here. Um, because in, it's important to put our hands up against racism but we also need to add our component to it, which is we need to add compassion to our daily lives and to our daily practice, because that is an incredibly powerful tool to undermine racism. And I want you to just think about how can I in my everyday, like the, every moment of every day we make choices and actions, and how can we be more compassionate and more mindful in those choices and actions, and to be able to give compassion to someone. The hardest thing in the world is to give compassion to someone who doesn't have any compassion, like I used to be. But those people are the people that need, us to, need it the most. And so I invite you to 
celebrate you know, the, the diversity, the struggle against racism, but also bring it into your daily life and let's have a compassion revolution to go along with it. Thank you. We really wanted to end the program today with an uplifting performance, something that really inspires you to, t to leave here and to go and to be better. So, you know, I've seen this next group perform and I have to say they're pretty awesome. The Sean McDance team represents the biggest Bollywood dance academy in the world. The team here today consists of some of the brightest and most talented performers in the Lower Mainland. Today for us, they've put together an act on a medley of holy songs, so please put your hands together.